I'm sure we will all learn from all kinds of circumstances. Yes. Because we are already under the control of the highest love. Yes. And this is because of the mercy of Gurudev. So Gurudev is every day again, you know, so he wants to show us the way, give us some, uh, what do you say, uh, not only inspiration, the kind of vision. He wants to see how to fix it, <laughs> how to always manjari is feeling, manjari is uh, baba. Little bit deviating, he checking. Oh, yeah, not fixing. <laughs> this is, this is a neutral. <laughs> this is a neutral position. You have to be always fixed like this. <laughs> so this is, uh, then, you know, like me, so foolish. Many time, many, many time listening and, you know, slowly, slowly understanding, slowly, slowly, like accumulate, like, uh, like this very, very, Slow, <laughs> but what to do? Your fortune. I don't learn anything, although I hear again and again. So you are very fortunate to to learn. No, we are very fortunate to have you know your associations, especially German Sangha, many senior devotees, many Rashka devotees. Honestly, I'm just here to steal. <laughs> <laughs> no, today we are today we are lead, I don't know this is, is okay. Today today we are leading uh, Birapax Manjari 74. And uh, this is uh, you know uh in the morning or when yeah, you in the morning in the morning. Oh. Okay. And uh so Krishna Krishna went to uh, Chandra Bari's Kunja. And then Krishna become late. <laughs> <laughs> and that story. <laughs> then, then Manjari also, you know, sometimes joking, joking, no, actually chastising Krishna. And also Radita Saki and Padma's conversation, very funny. And uh, so Radita was a little bit, I think maybe daytime, just, you know, little bit sleeping. And then, then Padma like, uh, sarcastically saying to Radita. Then, <laughs> Radita also very funny, you know, funny answer. And uh, indirectly, you know, you are not inviting, you are not inviting, you know, Krishna's, you know, pasta, you know, Krishna's like a kunjarira. You are sleeping in the veranda, you know, like, <laughs> Radita was so much, you know, Sarcastically joking and extended, you were so great, Saki. You were so fortunate, you know, extended saying, but uh, internally, you know, very interesting. They are sarcastically, they are saying. <coughs> so this is always some like a parakia, you know, parakia, <laughs> some, some intention always there. So we need uh, like Rashka Vaishnava to help. Just to, we are leading, but sometimes we don't understand. We cannot go into deep. <laughs> but uh, by the association, uh, especially Gora Sundara is very nice. Now he's now very every day attending morning class and quite uh, very fixing Gora Sundara and uh, very, very enlivening. So I hope here also Gora, <laughs> Gora Sundara may appear. Now, today we are very fortunate. We have good association. Um, so maybe we will start with some. Yes, please. Sajan. Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityana
Jai Shri Rathi, my obeisances and loving hugs to all of you. Jai Guru Dev. Nitai Gaur Haribol. So today we are reading verse number one from Shri Shri Radha Rasa Sudaniri. <clears throat> I have to admit, it is one of my dearest verses. I love this verse very much. Because it's explaining, I mean, Ananda Das Babaji is explaining in the purport that practically the whole process in such short and very deep words. So that's why I think we can hear this again and again, just to remind what is the path? What is the process? And so on. 
So that's why I chose this verse number one of Sri Sri Radha Rasa Sudanidi. And of course, you're always invited whenever you like. Just stop me, interrupt me, and share your feelings. I offer my obeisances unto Lord Gora Chandra, who is surrounded by all his associates and whose body is studded with gold pimples. Those pimples of ecstasy that mock the beauty of blossoming kadamba flowers. He raises his arms repeatedly and loudly crying, Hurry, hurry, as he dances and sings showering the surface of the earth with cascades of tears. <clears throat> Again, I offer my obeisances unto Lord Gorachandra, who is surrounded by all his associates and whose body is studded with goose pimples of ecstasy that mock the beauty of blossoming kadamba flowers. He raises his arms repeatedly and loudly crying, hurry, hurry, as he dances and sings, showering the surface of the earth with cascades of tears. It is titled Auspicious Invocation. Comments. Sripad Prabodhananda Saraswati is the object of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's great mercy. So his mind and heart are always absorbed in the sweet pastimes. So his mind and heart are always absorbed in the sweet pastimes, attributes and sentiments of Srimati Radharani in Braj. Now he begins his delicious book of eager prayer named Radharasa Sudanini, out of compassion for the devotees who aspire for the confidential service of Srimati Radharani's lotus feet. In this verse, he praises his worshipful deity Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. <coughs> So actually, from this first sentence, it is very clear that we can connect the mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu with the mercy of Sri Radha. Srila Ananda Das Babaji is writing here that Srila Prabhupada Saraswati is the object of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's great mercy. And he also writes that his mind and heart are always absorbed in the sweet pastimes 
attributes and sentiments of Srimati Radharani in Braj. So here we already have a very, very deep, deep, deep subject matter because, as you all know, that um, Prabhupada Saraswati Thakur is not per se, <laughs> he is, but not per se a manchari because he is Tunga Vidya in uh, one of his spiritual bodies, but that is no restriction. In the Vedanta Sutra, it is said that uh, eternally perfected soul are not restricted to only one body. And we can see that there is one very beautiful verse in, uh, in one theater play of Srila Rupa Goswami. I put that one on my blog uh, in accordance with Advaita Ji, uh, where Mahaprabhu is promising that even you, you have a form which is even not in Madhurya Ras, by Mahaprabhu's grace, Mahaprabhu is promising, by my grace, I will give you a manchari form. So here Baba is saying that Prabhupada Saraswati Thakur is the object of mercy of Mahaprabhu. So that is actually meaning that we all can be that and become that manchari uh, so we can all become a manjari of Mahaprabhu because his extraordinary mercy, even though Prabhupada Saraswati Thakur is Tunga Vidya, he is in Sakhi Bhav primarily. But by the grace of Mahaprabhu, all the associates and Advaita, he, he even told me that Advaita Acharya himself, he also got manjari body. So all the pari all the parivars, all the pari. All, all the associates of Mahaprabhu, even if they have not uh, uh, primarily the body of a, of a manjari, they all got a body of manjari path because uh, the spiritual world is unlimited. And this is really, really, really a very mysterious subject matter. And this is a very deep one because here you can see that manjari path is trumping. Saki Bhav. So it's more intimate. And this is the Audarya. This is the magnanimosity of Mahaprabhu. Magnanimous but that means most merciful. So even Tunga Vidya as a Saki now has entrance in another. We cannot imagine how this is working, how he can have two, two spiritual bodies, but it doesn't matter. Our mind is limited, but it's a fact that by the grace Mahaprabhu, he promised all my Parishads will have a spiritual body as a Manjari in Vrindavan, even though you may not even be in Madhurya Ras. This is really, really something special. So, can I say a little bit also? Of course, please. So, uh, Tarun Baba was explained very nicely. We are also discussing with uh, Roshan Damodara and also Gurudev a little bit. So, and uh, this is very interesting, this Radha Rasasda Nidhi. Actually, Radha Rasasda Nidhi is two kinds of Radha Rasasda Nidhi. One, Saki Baba's Radha Rasasda Nidhi. And another one is this book is Manjari Baba, Radha Rasasda Nidhi. Very interesting. Oh, and then Saki Baba's man, uh, Saki Baba's Radharas Dasindri, if you know, interesting. First bus and last bus is cutting. What is the last bus and uh, first bus? This is the description of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So that means if you cut Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, we cannot access Manjari Baba. But if we put Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, if we could get mercy of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, we can access Manjari Baba. And Gurudev recently very stress, very strongly stressing. Real Chaitanya Mahaprabhu teaching is Babo Urasarasa, is Manjari Baba. So Tarun Baba explained very nicely, and also we are discussing so, what subject matter is Radharasa Sanidhi? This actually glorification of Radharani. 
And Manjari's, Manjari's service, Manjari Baba also mentioned in this one, but something touching, not go deep into. Because I feel, because Tarun Baba mentioned this Tunga Bitya Saki. So they are even Saki also very, very much curious, curious to know this Manjari's Seba. So, but they are touching. Maybe some, some place deeper, but uh, deeper subject is mainly Birapax Manjari. Because Birapax Manjari's author is Ragnar Das Goswami. So, Torasi Manjari. And he got full mercy of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. This is, this is very interesting point. And uh, what, what I want to say is someone who get mercy of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu or someone who get mercy of follower of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu really, that person may get Baba Urasarasa, this Manjari Baba. Rade, rade. I was, I was just, uh, I am so happy that I am not on Facebook anymore so often. So uh, once in four weeks or five weeks, I just click on my account and I check what is going on on Facebook. And I know, like you said, I know right now they are again, again, this world is full of, uh, of quarrels and, and fighting. And right now, again, you know, the, the Hitari Mangsha followers, you know them, they have their own. Uh, Radha Rasa Sudanidi. So we say very nice, very beautiful. You have your own Radha Rasa Sudanidi and we have ours. But honestly speaking, they say uh, that Radha Rasa Sudanidi is not from Prabodhananda Saraswati Thakur. So I immediately, I immediately went out and I was not even trying to go into any discussion because my Gurudev I follow my Gurudev and they should follow their Gurudev and there is no need of, of this quarrel because both perspectives are okay. Like you said, Saki Bhav and Manjari Bhav. But there is no doubt, the Gaudiya Vaishnavas have no doubt that Prabhupada Saraswati uh, is the author of Radha Rasa Sudhanidhi and maybe there is another one. There is no... There is no patent on the name of Radha Rasa Sudhanidhi because Radhika is the ocean of compassion. So there are many, there are many, you know, like, you know, so many words in the, and languages and which are the same, uh, like, you know, meaning the same meaning. So it's, it's very quarrelsome to go into. I just wanted to say this. It's very useless to waste the time in, and energy we just focus, like Jayananda Maharaj said, what is the message? What really, like Gauravani, he, he, he chose that verse, and the message is very clear in this first verse. Everything Gauravani said, everything Baba wanted to say, he put in verse 1, 2, and 3, I think, and even 4, and then everything you got to know you is there. So we stick, we stick to Guru Shastra and Sadhu Sangha, so we know what is right but i just i just think that this is this is the sign of the kali yuga that once in a while there comes something up and then people start arguing and it's a bogus it's a bogus waste of time so we stick to to what baba is presenting us and uh, for those who are in saki bhav well very wonderful but we are manjari bhav sadakas and we have the quintessence of Radha Rasa Sudhanidhi together with Vila Bhagusumanjali. Very good. I agree. 100% agree. <laughs> My dears, thank you so much for sharing all this. I have one uh, little question for you, please. A little bit slower because I see that the translation is collapsing. So, but I love very much that your heart is so full of feelings and you have to express. I love this very much, but please a little bit slow. So, the auspicious invocation, this is the title from Srila Ananda Das Babaji. Um, I also had one feeling because actually, uh, as Tunga Vidya, 
Srila Prabhupada Ananda Saraswati could not write that book, of course. He is giving praise to the person who gave him this presence. Who gave him this ability to be in Mandarin? This is Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And this Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is actually giving us all the ability to go inside of this theme, of this topic, to go in that bath. This is the presence. And this is, as we know, Unat Uchvadaras Svabhakti Priya. So this is the path we want to follow. So this is the mercy we got. And I think it is so important, at least for me, it is so important again and again, because when we chant our Gayatris, usually what we do first is, we remember Panchatattva. Oh. Behind me is the picture, that's why I'm doing like this. You cannot see now. There it is, Panchatattva. So, this Panchatattva is actually nothing else than Radharani, the mood of Radharani, with all aspects of her love, open the arms for us, want to embrace us and say, welcome home, here you are. For me, this is the feeling, because Panchatattva is the entrance. We cannot enter without the mercy of Panchatattva into Manjuriba. And this is actually also very, very clear from beginning on in this verse. Without the mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, even Srila Prabhupada Nanda Saraswati could not write that. Sri Sri Radha Rasa Sudhani. So that's why he's praising his worshipable deity, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So Vraj Vihara Sri Krishna accepted the mood and complexion of Sri Radha and became Gora to fulfill three desires. To understand the greatness of Radha's love, the wonderful qualities that she alone relishes in him, and the happiness she feels when she realizes the sweetness of his love. In Vrindavan Lila, Krishna was the witness of the sweetness of Sri Radha's love, of which he himself was the object. And in Gaura Lila, he accepted the mood and luster of Sri Radha to understand the gravity of her love. In the opening verse of his book, Radharas Sudanidi, Sripad Prabodhananda Saraswati draws a beautiful picture of Radha's emotions. Oh, sorry, of how the full transcendental truths of Braj, Sri Krishna, experiences the sweetness of Radha's emotions. Here Sripad follows the custom in the Gaudiya Vaishnava tradition to praise Lord Gora before commencing the description of Sri Sri Radha Madhava's sweet pastimes. This is called Gora Chandrika. 
In his book Sri Chaitanya Chant Amrita 88, Sripad writes Yata Yata Gora Padara Vinde Mindeta Bhaktim Grita Punyara Sihi Tata Tatot Sarpati Ridya Kasmat Radha Padamboja Sum Sudamba Rasihi. So actually, I feel that here it is written that Sripad follows the custom in the Gaudiya Vaishnava tradition to praise Lord Gora before commencing the description. We can see also this from different aspects. Some are doing this in Aishwarya Bhav. Oh, I always have to offer my respect. But here in this point it is not. It may include, of course, the respect, because Srila Prabhupada Saraswati is giving the perfect example. But this is not his intention, his main intention. His main intention is the love he feels. The love he feels for Radha and the love, that love he got from the mood of Radha in Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is giving us the present, the presence of Radharani. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is actually giving us Radha Bhakti. Connecting us. Her feelings from Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, we get it. So it's about, it's a description about love and not, also it can sound like this, it is the tradition or the custom of Gaudiya Vaishnavism to do that. But actually, it's deep, deep love. So when a very fortunate soul experiences devotion for Lord Gora's lotus feet, the nectar ocean from Radha's lotus feet suddenly floods his heart. When a very fortunate soul experiences devotion for Lord Gora's lotus feet, the nectar ocean from Radha's lotus feet suddenly floods his heart. Sri Gora Sundara has brought an unprecedented torch of Brajras whose bright effulgence shows the devotees the way to the sweet bhajan of Sri Vandavan, which is otherwise hard to see. And along with that sweet transcendental Brajras, Mahaprabhu introduced himself to the devotees of this world. This is, this is why it's so important, you know, from our tradition, mm, when I came to my Gurudev Anandadas Babaji Maharaj, he, he told us that before we start chanting the Maha Mantra, um, we chant four rounds of Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadatha Shivasati Gora Bhakta Vrinda. So we chant four rounds of the Panchatatra Mantra. And with this sentence you just read, uh, this is the whole whole philosophy of Gaudiya Vaishnava, of Gaudiya Vaishnavism. The door to the storehouse of Radhika's lotus feet will only be open if Mahaprabhu is giving you the key. And what is the key of that thing? The Nata Pisunichana. So without the mercy of Sriman Mahaprabhu, it is not possible to open the storehouse 
of Radhika's uh, lotus feet of Radhika's beautiful seva because he is in the mood of Swamini of Radhika and he can give it to us without any uh, regards of qualification and, and, and everything. Baba said, every single individual soul is qualified for being in Manjari Bhav Sadhana. So that is a very assuring and a very hopeful statement because that is the magnumosity of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Otherwise, there is not possible. There is not a possibility to enter Pratara. So, therefore, all the time when when you sit together and when you chant, it's always good to chant first mantras to Gora and Nithai, to Goranga and Nityananda, Gora Lila, and then from Gora Lila you go into Brachalila. So this is the proper etiquette and the proper way to get the mercy of the of those two most merciful uh, persons to enter into Raganuga Bhakti. This is one sentence and it's so deep. It has the whole philosophy of, of Raganuga Tattva is there. And Mahaprabhu only came for this. He didn't come to build temples. He didn't come to spread the holy name. These are all secondary secondary issues by the appearance of Mahaprabhu, the primary uh, uh, benediction of his appearance is to spread Raganuga Bhakti in the mood of a manjari. So this is so so wonderful and I'm glad that you chose this verse. Uh, I was wondering why is he chosen verse one? But no I know because so many so many keys are in this beautiful uh, tika. Thank you. Thank you for your nice explanations. And we are very happy that we have a follower of Srila Anandadas Babaji with us. So like you said, here Chaitanya Charit Amita Anjalila Chapter 3, which is later on in the same uh, explanation, is saying all the moving and non-moving creatures have heard your loud chanting. And here we hear what happens, because you said all living beings are actually, they fit to get the mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, all living beings. So now we hear what happens when Gorahari is chanting loudly, hearing it. All the moving creatures were liberated from material existence. And after the non-moving creatures hear it, there is an echo. Actually, it's not an echo. It is the chanting of these non-moving creatures. All these indescribable things are possible by your mercy. Mahaprabhu dances with restless feet and sprinkles the earth with his tears. And then comes a wonderful description, which maybe we can read later. How sweet the Lord is dancing. But here we can see what Tarun Baba just said. What is happening? All living beings get the mercy and all living beings get the possibility to enter into Mandari Bhav. And the beginning is that the Lord is mercifully distributing the vibration, because it begins with Smaran, but also his few, his tears, his tears of compassion. And this is the mood of Radha, because Radha, only Radha, you cannot see it in anyone else, only Radha 
Her whole existence is melting out of compassion. We know usually the heart of a person is melting out of compassion. But only in Radharani's case, her whole body melts. So we have to really go deep in this subject to understand it. With feelings, what does it mean? The whole existence of a person is melting out of compassion. So for me, it's very clear there is no person who is more compassionate than Radha. Because even Krishna, even he wants her compassion, needs her compassion, is falling to her lotus feet to serve, to get her compassion. So what to speak of us? So I think Tarun Baba gave us an opening to meditate on the deep, deep mercy we got from Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. We cannot understand it, it's not possible. So many times we speak about it. But if we don't cry, if our heart is not jumping from left to right and wants to jump out of our body, then we did not understand anything. Because even non-moving creatures are chanting the holy name when they hear the Lord chanting. We heard from Gurudev this story that, I think it was in Hungarian, isn't it? Where there are stones who has a heartbeat. So we heard about this. Maybe we wonder how it's possible. Maybe this stone had some experience with Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. <laughs> so even stones are melting by the mercy of Radharani. That's the point. No living being can be cool if he gets in touch with the mercy of Mahaprabhu. And he's not just giving any, any kind of bhakti. He is giving everyone the highest bhakti, like Tarun Baba explained so nicely. It doesn't matter in which bhav you are, you will get the highest on top. And we know from Chaitanya Charitamrita, the discussion between Raman and Roy and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is factually ending in the same situation. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is giving the highest gift for the lowest persons in Kali Yuga. This is my good luck. And of course also our good luck, but I don't know where you are standing, I just know that I need it. <laughs> I need it so badly. So, if Gora had not come, that's the next verse. Yati Gora nahoto ki meno hoito ke mone dari tam de radhara mahima bremarasa sima jagat janoto ke. If Gora had not come, how would the world have been? 
Who would have taught the world the greatness of Radha and the limit of Prema Rasa? Madura Brinda Vipina Maduri Bravesha Chaturi Sara Varacha Yuvati Bhavera Arati Shakati Hoite Kara. Who would have shown the way to enter into the sweetness of Brindavan and the anxious mood? of the young girls of Braj. The only way to extinguish the burning sensation of the threefold material misery caused by the elements, one's own body or mind, or by other creatures, with a nectar stream of love for Sri Sri Radha Govinda is the mercy of Sri Man Mahaprabhu. So the only way to extinguish the burning sensation of the threefold miseries with a nectar stream of love for Sri Sri Radha Govinda is the mercy of Sri Man Mahaprabhu. So, there is no other way, there is no other way, there is no other way. Only to get the mercy. So, Gorabani Ji, Gorabani. This Especially first sentence, I feel so important. If Gora had not to come, how would the world have been? Who would have taught the world the greatness of Radha and limit of Prema Rasa? This is, I think, Gora want to teach us this greatness of Radhika and the limit of Premarasa. And because this is interesting, because our Gaudiya Vaishnava, so Bhagatam is most important book for our Vaishnava. So, but if we read Bhagatam, Maybe some fortunate person may understand the glory of Gopi. And glory of Radhika is hidden. It's kind of hiddenly mentioned. So therefore, if we learn Bhagatam, if Mahaprabhu could not appear, then this secret of Radharani's greatness, Mahima, is not revealed to ordinary living entity. And then, because in historically, before Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, no Radharani is deity in the world, as far as my understanding. After Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Radharani is deity appear. And uh, very few persons say Radharani. Actually, they say Radharani, but uh, only Gopi Baba or Saki Baba. Who could understand Radharani dearly? Saki could understand Radharani dearly? Gopi could understand dearly? We have to say no. Because Gopi Saki could not enter very intimate pastime, Nikunjarira, especially Nibrit Nikunjarira. 
So, in that dealer, who could see only intimate maid servant of Radhika could see very intimate pastime. So, this indi indirectly mentioned, Gora show us glory, not only glory of Radhika, glory of Manjari. Because who could understand the limit of Premarasa? So if we see Chaitanya Charita Murita, uh, Gorabani mentioned Raman Raya and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu conversation. So from beginning, uh, Baranashanam Dharma and uh, offer the result of, you know, work and then give up everything and then Gyana Mishra Bhakti and so on. And then Shanta Bhakti, Dasha Bhakti, Sakya, Bhassari and Madhurya. Then he described, interesting, at first he described Krishna Tattva. And then he described Radha Tattva. And then described Prema Tattva. Then finally, Ram and then Mahaprabhu say, can you say little more beyond this one? <laughs> then Mahap and then Ramana say, I'm sorry. This beyond my intelligence. Nobody, so far, nobody asked this limit of love. Nobody asked me, how can I describe to this very intimate thing? But by your mercy, I may say one thing, <laughs> but I don't know. This is you like it. You don't like it. I don't know. So this is Prema Virasa Vivarta. So, and then describe this Prema Virasa Vivarta. This Prema Virasa Vivarta is kind of the limit of Prema Rasa. Means Radha and Krishna become one. Not only one. They change the Lord. And uh, that's pastime. That's one is only Manjari could see, could feel it. So this small sentence, but I feel this is very, very deep meaning. And indirectly, this bus, bus gosh, I feel this is singing Mahaprabhu's glory is glory of Radharani and also glory of Manjari Baba, Baba Urasa Rasa. That's my honest feeling. This, this, this sentence is so deep and I don't understand, you know. So if, so all of you, if you could more go deep, deep into so please help, help us. <laughs> so this is, I feel, this is very important point. Without Mahaprabhu, we cannot end, we cannot understand Radharani. And if we don't understand Radharani, we cannot understand really Krishna, who is Krishna. Especially Brajendra Nandara. We don't understand. We don't understand Radha's Krishna. We don't understand. Radha, Radha. Thank you for explaining this again in uh, details to understand it better. This is actually, I think, the most important point that in the end they were speaking about the highest Mahabhav and this could only be understood in Mandre Bhav. And this shows that actually Chaitanya Mahaprabhu gave, although he is 
Saki, he gave Manjari path. So how otherwise they could speak like that? So again, this is a very important point. Only by the mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, before there was no possibility to get that deep understanding. And Ramananda Roy admits, my mouth is moving, but actually you are speaking through me. And it's, this is a very clear description. You gave me the mercy. I am listening to what I'm speaking. This could only be your mercy. Very clear. When the heart is touched by emotions directly in the form of the five basic relationships of servanthood, friendship, parenthood, etc., or indirectly in the form of the seven secondary moods such as laughter, chivalry, etc., Related to Krishna, the wise call it sattva. And the emotions coming from that are called sattvika bhavas. The Lord had accepted the mood and lustre of Sri Radha and had become the main shelter for his own Rati. Therefore, the sattvika and other bhavas had become fully manifest in him. This is confirmed again in Chaitanya Charit Amrita. Dahe Mukya Rasha Shroi Hoya Chen Mahashoi Tate Hoy Sarva the Lord had become the main shelter of his own rasa, and so all ecstasies arose in him. Sripad sweetly depicts how Sri Goranga's body displayed the unrivaled ecstasies derived from relishing the sweetness of Radha's rasa within himself by saying Nindantam Pulakot Karena Vikasan Nipa Prasuna Chabim. His body was purified by goose pimples that mocked freshly blossoming kadamba flowers. Mahaprabhu's body manifested udipta sattvika bhavas. So before we go in the description of this udipta sattvika bhavas, maybe someone wants to comment how it's possible what was not possible for Krishna when he was here, how it's possible that this happens in Mahaprabhu. Tarun Baba, maybe? Jayananda? Someone wants to... Question was? <laughs> How it's possible that Mahaprabhu's body manifested Udipta Sattvika Bhavas when he because was as Krishna? It was not like that, isn't it? Not possible. Mm. There are three reasons why Mahaprabhu appeared. Mm. This very famous reasons to taste the love of Swamini, to understand her love, and to experience this. So. Mm, he experienced the love of Swamini in his own body because Krishna cannot do this in his Leela. 
he's he's there <clears throat> in a very different very different form and very different perspective he's there as the only one who is in the center of love and swamini's love is centered on the lotus feet of krishna so krishna cannot experience what swamini of course he can but in this lila in his lila as adi as the enjoyer of all rasas he cannot enjoy or he cannot experience what is going on in swamini's heart for that he had to take on her bhav and he cannot do this just imagine if he would do this in vrindavan they would think he had gone he had gone a little gaga if he would run around and you know this would not be possible it, it, this is human like pastimes in vrindavan krishna cannot experience the love of swamini in his own heart but as mahaprabhu accepting the bhav of swamini it became possible for him and how very easily by doing the sadhana of raganuga bhakti he could experience this manjari bhav what the kinkari experience krishna in vrindavan he also experience he also sometimes sits down and meditates on swamini but this is not the same because then he experience his love for radhika but in mahaprabhu's body he totally experience what she really experiences in her heart so that is a very big difference and this is the the point why why he appeared this is the intern the in what is it called the internal reason why mahaprabhu appeared to to experience this sweet love of swamini in his own heart and therefore all the satvika bhavs appeared like like the, the his, uh, his 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 body was elongated then and then he can he we, the, the the body was the, the arm and feet went into his body so all this experience can only happen by himself feeling that the bhav of swamini and again he is showing how is this possible by doing raganuga bhakti not nothing else it just it didn't came to his head it flew on his head and he had this experience but he showed by his example uh, by engaging in raganuga bhakti everything is possible so this is actually the main teaching he is giving us that we can also experience this bliss and this wonderful bhav of swamini this tatatmika where where the manjaris are very very close to swamini even so close that the the bites of krishna will appear on the lips of the manjari so this is what mahaprabhu is saying to us that i i i tasted the love of swamini in my own heart and i can give it to you all if you follow me so i was thinking i was thinking um how the, the bigger question is not how is it possible for mahaprabhu to do this because krishna was not doing the bigger question is how can we as sadakas enter into the realm of mahaprabhu's mercy so for me as a very arrogant and proud man i always have this uh, a vision in front of my eyes you can only enter and you can only get the mercy of mahaprabhu by being humble and this is my lifetime challenge <laughs> this is the challenge of my lifetime to become humble trinata pisu nichana this is the key without being humble and now also it is important to understand what means humility and we talked about this several times humility doesn't mean that i feel like the last person on earth the dirtiest the stupidest the most incredible stupid person that is not true humility so true humility means accepting and understanding our position as eternal servants this is true humility and that this is not worthless this is very valuable because without me as a servant of swamini the whole lila cannot take place in full so true humility means understanding my very very tiny tiny position in this big 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 lila and not like oh i'm so useless i'm such a waste of time i'm just useless and i go into to go into depression and become very very worthless so this is not the point so trinada peace on each now really means that we understand that we have one position only and this is the position of a servant either in daily life to other people or in spiritual life so this this meaning of trinada peace on 
Satinada Pisu Nichana. This is the key to, to get into the to contact with Mahaprabhu. If I'm not humble, I have no I have no possibility of coming to contact with Gora's mercy because I'm proud. So if you are proud, Mahaprabhu's mercy will not come into your heart. Ego, the Radhika's love cannot appear in my heart. So how can this work? It can only work in one in one circumstance. Why? How did Mahaprabhu arrange for us fallen souls to come into contact with Raganuga Bhakti? Very simple. He ordered Nityananda Prabhu and his wife to initiate and his parishads to start parivars. So this means Guru Parampara. Without Guru Parampara, we cannot enter into the Leela and the mercy of Mahaprabhu. This is the first step of the Inada Pisunichana. You see in Bhagavad Gita it is said, approach a spiritual master. Yes, I know, slowly, slowly. <laughs> approach, approach a spiritual master in humility. Tat, tat, I think Tatvani, I don't know the words in the Bhagavad Gita by Sanskrit, I only know the English. Approach a spiritual master very humbly and try to inquire the truth from the Guru. So this again shows the humility. So we have to be very humble, approach a Sadguru in the line of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And with this, we can enter into the love of Mahaprabhu. And with this, we can understand her, his bhav of Swamini in his own heart. Without this, without this first step of Guru Patashraya in the lineage of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, nothing will work. So in this sense, we could say that humbleness means to understand I am helpless, I need help. Right? So yes, yes. I, I cannot do it alone. I need help. This could be ami atitina. In this li line of, of uh Gurudev Kripa Bindu Dio. Shakti Buddhina Ami Atitina. Koromori Atmasata. Good if I have no qualification. I'm helpless. I need your help. Make my Atma like your Atma. This is the ultimate wish that he is taking me by my head and he is, do, is making me like he is himself. So this helplessness, this is the cry of the soul. She, we should cry like this. Shakti Pudina Amya Titina. I have no power. I have no strength. Your feet, Guru, your feet, Gurudev, please, please help me out of this samsara and put me as a speck of lotus, a speck of dust to the lotus feet of Swamini. This is the, the eager prayer of the Sadaka. So, in the same mood, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu accepted the mood of Radha. We can understand that he was giving us the best example. Yes. He did it, so why shouldn't we? If God is showing us the humbleness, why we shouldn't follow? He himself, he himself took Diksha. He himself took Diksha and then showed us the way, the proper way to, to do this. This is marvelous. This is very wonderful. That's amazing, isn't it? God himself, I mean, he should know everything, isn't it? <laughs> he is taking shelter by Radharani. So from argument, we cannot understand why we shouldn't do that. <laughs> we are not higher than God. <laughs> we should follow that example and get the mercy of Radharani. And the source for that mercy is Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, because he took the mood. He was stealing for us. Like in the beginning, I said, I'm just here to steal. I want to steal the mercy of all of you. I want to get some drops of rasa from all of you. I think we also need to understand that what really Gurudev is? What is our Gurudev? What is what is he and what is his function? He is only, he is not, the re of course, he is the representative of Krishna on the Tattva level, 
This is the understanding of knowledge. But on the rasa, on the level of rasa, Srila Gurudev is the adjutant. He is the, he is the ambassador of Swamini's kingdom. He is the, he is the, he is directly connected in his manjari form with Radhika. And this is the correct way to, to see our Gurudev both in Goralila, which was, and then in also in, in, in Brajalila. So Gurudev is our navigator to get us out of this misery and to experience what Mahaprabhu was telling to, to, to Ramananda Roy, now be quiet. We cannot go into this. This your Gurudev will tell you <laughs> when you, when you receive Sita Pranali, when you, when you are in on the intimate level with Gurudev, all this, this truth, it will be revealed to you. This is the mercy of Mahaprabhu coming through Parampara, no other way. <laughs> so now we hear the description of this Udipta Sattvika Bhavas. When five or six Sattvika ecstasies simultaneously arise, to the greatest extent, they are called Udipta. Again, Sripad says, he lifts his arms and loudly chants, Hari, Hari. This is an Anubhav called Kroshana. Srila Rupa Goswami says in Bhakti Ras Amrita Sindhu Anu Bhavas Tu Chittasthya Bhavanam Avapodhakkaha Activities that awaken certain moods in the heart are called Anu Bhava. When Rati is relished within the heart, it will be externally manifest. The echo of Mahaprabhu's loud chanting of Harinam immersed all the moving and non-moving creatures in the taste of love of Krishna. So all in all, we can say that the highest ecstatic emotions are coming out when Mahaprabhu is crying, Hari, Hari. These are the moods of Radharani missing her beloved. And in this moment, whoever hears that is melting. And even if the hearts are like stone, like in my case, still this stone will melt. Without taking the bhav of Radharani, this wouldn't be possible for Krishna. So if we want to also have this experience, then we have to take shelter in that line where this mood is distributed. We heard already the description, what the moving and non-moving living entity did. So, now there comes another description of the sweetness. How sweet, actually, was this scene when Mahaprabhu was singing and dancing like this? And again, for me, this is just the praise of Radharani. When I hear these words, I always remember this is a praise of Swamini. This is the praise of Radharani because Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is in the mood of Radha in this moment. So it's beginning, this Sri Sri Radharasa Sudhanidhi is beginning with the praise of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, which is already a praise 
of Radharani. And then in the following verses, it's going on praising Radharani, isn't it? The first verses, they just praise Radha in the highest forms. So, of course, the whole book is a praise of Radharani's qualities, goes more deep and more deep. But like you said, Tarun, from the first verses, we can understand the whole path, actually. Because Srila Ananda Das Babaji, by his mercy, like Prabhupada in Bhagavad Gita, page 4, he is writing the essence of Bhagavad Gita already. And here Ananda Das Babaji is also combining the essential points, actually, in the first verses. If we would be so happy to understand what he is writing here, we could relish the whole book more deeply. Can you please pray for me that, yeah? We know we need the mercy, so... Here's a description. Madura, Madura, Gora, Kishore, Madura, Madura, Nat, Madura, Mandura, Saba, Sahachara, Madura, Madura, Hat. How sweet is Gora Kishore, the youthful golden Lord Chaitanya? How sweet is his dancing? How sweet are his associates. Immediately I remember how sweet is the adolescent form of our Swamini. How sweet are her girlfriends. How sweet are the manjaris, her shadows. Madura Madura Mridanga Bhajata Madura Madura Tan Madura Rase Matala Bhakata Gaoye Maduragan. How sweetly the drums are playing. How sweet is their rhythm. How sweetly the devotees are maddened by transcendental mellows. And how sweetly they sing. Madura Helana Madura Dolana Madura Madura Gati Madura Madura Vajana Sundara Madura Madura Bhati How sweetly he moves, how sweetly he swings, and how sweet are his steps. How sweet are his beautiful words. And how sweet this is his radiance. We may also remember the radiance of Radharani and Krishna in Vrindavan when they meet. And how the radiance is when Radharani is sitting on Krishna's lap and crying out, My Mohan, where are you? Because this radiance actually is described here. It's just another form of that occasion. And how sweet Radharani is playing her vina and the drums are playing there in Vrindavan was described in the verse before. So for me, it's really just a description, the same scene we can read in Vilap Kusumanjali. How 
How sweet are his lips and how sweet are his smiles that defeat the sweetness of the moon. Whose smile is defeating the sweetness of the moon? Sashimuki. How sweet is his eagerness? How sweet is his love? And how sweet are his words? How sweetly his reddish eyes are making sweet hints. The sidelong glances of our Swamini. Unfortunately, Rai Shikha is deprived of this sweet love. While Mahaprabhu dances, his eyes manifest the sattvika ecstasy of Ashru. In Chaitanya Charit Amrita, it is described how Mahaprabhu manifested this ecstasy while dancing before the chariot of Lord Jagannath. Jalayantra dhara yeno bohe ashru jala Tears were flowing from his eyes like fountains, sprinkling all the people that stood around. This Sattvika transformation is so wonderful that one may ask, does the Ganga water that normally flows from Lord Vishnu, or the self-same Sri Mahaprabhu now, his lotus feet now flow from his eyes? Apani koriya swadhane shikaila bhakta gane brema chimmanira prabhudhani Chaitanya Chayadamida The Lord not only taught the world about brema, he also gave a splendid example of how to relish its flavors. The Lord is the wealthy owner of the Chintamani gem of Prema. The people of the world will be blessed with initiation into the mantra of Prema by voluntarily selling themselves to the lotus feet of that sweetly, blissfully dancing and chanting Sri Gora. Even the stones melt when they remember how sweetly Gora dances and how he rolls on the ground like a golden mountain. All glories to Sri Gora Chandra, who gives joy to the world, who is the moon of Gora Mandala, the holy circle around Navadvip and whose body is studded with goose pimples of ecstasy that are as wonderful as blooming kadamba flowers. How nicely Gora dances, repeatedly lifting his arms and loudly chanting, Hari, Hari. A stream of tears flows from Gora's eyes and sprinkles the surface of the earth. Thus, Sripad Prabodhananda Saraswati begins his Rasika book named Radharasa Sudanidi 
by offering his repeated obeisances to Lord Gaurahari and his associates and witnessing his kirtan pastimes. This verse serves the auspicious invocation of this book. It is the highest wealth of all the devotees and it makes them happy by remembering and hearing it, decorating his body with the dust of his Guru's lotus feet. Haripat sings these poetical songs. So here ends the commentary on verse number one of Sri Sri Radha Rasa Sudhanidhi. So maybe someone wants to share on that impression more. If not, then it's interesting to hear the connection with the next verses, actually. This was the first. So the second is even Lord Madhusudana, who is hard to attain even by the best of yogis, feels himself greatly blessed when he is touched by even the slightest playful breeze coming from the tip of Sri Radhika's garment. I offer my obeisances to any direction in which I may find this daughter of Maharaj Rishabhanu. And this is entitled Threefold Auspicious Invocation. We remember, first verse was called Auspicious Invocation, and this is now Threefold Auspicious Invocation. Srila Ananda Das Babaji is giving us really a very deep impression of what is written here. He is giving so much hints. And verse 3, I offer my obeisances to the glories of Maharaj Brishabhanu's daughter, Sri Radhika, the beautiful dust of whose lotus feet is hardly attained by Lord Brahma, Lord Shiva, and others, and whose merciful glance, which is endowed with the most astonishing prowess, showers the nectar of the essence of all human pursuits. Love of God. So with human pursuits is not meant the four goals, only the fifth. And now the fourth verse is actually describing the dust of Sri Radha's lotus feet. I constantly remember the food dust of Sri Radhika, whose unlimited power instantly subdues even the supreme person, Sri Krishna, who himself cannot be easily seen even by the greatest devotees like Lord Brahma, Lord Shiva, Shukadev Muni, Narada Muni and Bhishma. 
So with these four verses, actually the greatness of Radharani is already installed. It is very clear there is no higher goal to reach, even for Krishna, than the dust of the lotus feet of our Swamini. So Gora Chandra, I know you always have a treasure in your heart for us, but we have to pull it out. So maybe we can throw a hug and get it. Jai Hurade. Jai Shirade. <laughs> Sometimes listening is much better than speaking. I relish very much. So beautiful. I thought about the question, what happened? How the world would be if Mahaprabhu would appear? So I'm thinking then, if Mahaprabhu not came, then there is no hope for any jiva to come out from the samsara. Because in Kali Yuga everyone is so unqualified, so fallen, that nobody can follow any religion <laughs> properly. And people are not pious at all. People are tired of religion. Ah, let me alone with your God. I don't want to listen to that. Religion, they make so many mistakes. People, they become atheists. So why the bhakti is not working in Kali Yuga? Nobody wants to follow the rules and the regulations and have fear of God. So if Mahaprabhu is not coming, then there is no hope for any jiva. There is only one hope. And that is unconditional love of Srimati Radharan. Completely denying the mistakes of the Jeevas. <laughs> you have no qualification, no problem. Just take it. That is the only hope, hope for us in Kali Yuga. And if Mahaprabhu not come, then there's no hope for us. Everyone is a sense enjoyer. And Mahaprabhu, he bringing the real enjoyment. It's very easy to us to understand, ah, I want to enjoy, I want to relish. So that is what Mahaprabhu giving us. Higher taste, higher enjoyment, higher sense gratification, spiritual sense gratification.
we can say you want to enjoy, yes, but enjoy in the right way. That is possible by Raga Bhakti. Vaidhi Bhakti is not good. So without Mahaprabhu, there is no chance for anyone. And then I'm very grateful. I got one realization about Ramananda Rai talking with Mahaprabhu. I never catch that point. And you and Jayananda Maharaj, he explained so nice. I was so nice. When Ramananda Rai speaking the highest thing and Mahaprabhu shut his mouth. Don't speak. <laughs> When he talking about Prem Vilas Vivar. But Ramananda Rai, he is Lalita, he cannot have experience of that. Because Saki cannot see that most intimate pastime of Radha and Noah. So by mercy of Mahaprabhu, even Lalita Saki, Ramananda Roy, he got the mercy to understand the highest love of Radha and Mohan and also the perspective of a Manjuri, because only Manjuri can see that. This is a Great thing, Jayananda Maharaj Shevada. I'm very grateful. Wow. Yeah. Thank you. Jai. Jai. Thank you very much. Oh, Chandra, always a treasure. But Gaurav Chandra, you have to share with us. If you just listen, if everyone is doing this, Jayananda is just listening now, and Tarun Baba and all others, then who is actually sharing with us? So please be merciful. I am a little shy also sometimes. Sometimes I want to say, but you help me always, Gauravani, when you little push. <laughs> then, okay, I will do. Okay, Otherwise, then we lovingly push you. I am happy you. also to listen to Tarun Baba. <laughs> Only one time, one week, I can listen. <laughs> so, I want to listen also. Okay. Yes, it's always nice to hear from Tarun Baba because he he knows Ananda Das Babaji so well, so because it, he's a disciple, very dear disciple of Ananda Das Baba. So we get some nectar which we could not get from other sources. So thank you for that, Tarun Baba. We appreciate that very much. Yeah, I try I try to to serve and I try to say something. Whatever comes into my heart is coming from Baba. Although he is not here on the material plane anymore, he is there guiding us from from where he now is. And when we connect with him in his manjari form, he will always be with us. He will always connect with us. And like Gora Chandra said, it's it's a, a special age, special crazy time. And we have a very, very good fortune to listen to this kind of kata and reading these books, all of 
of these books from Baba and from in India association with like-minded and loving devotees. This is the best you can do right now. If you look outside, you can only shake your heads and you can you can just uh, like this, you know, <laughs> and you just go like this and then you prepare yourself for good bhajan. It's hard as it is every week. It's very hard to live outside for those who have a job and for us who, who work full time. It's not easy to see what's going on in the world. And so we always have to rem remember ourselves that this is not our home. This is not our world. Our world should be inside. But this world outside makes it not easy. So we have to have a fortress in our heart that this, this water, this, this wild ocean cannot touch, cannot touch us. And it's every day. It's a, it's a challenge. At least for those who go out 10 hours, eight hours every day working. So I'm always trying to remember my Gurudev. And I always, when I go to school in the morning, I pray to Swamini that the day will pass in a nice way that I can be nice to them. And yeah, you see that, that you always remember that you are connected. There is some big, big line behind us, standing behind us way up 500 years. So who has that, you know, who can be proud of that? And it's nice and it's actually totally right to be proud of that, to belong to such a powerful family of Sadhu Maharaj and, and our Guru Dev. We are all in the same lineage of Nityananda. And this is the greatest mercy. And those who are in the line of Advaita Acharya, those who are in the line of Gadarda Pandit, this is the best way to, to be here and to try to, to cope with this world and such things, such discussions about, like you said, the first four verses of Radharas Sudanidi are especially wonderful because Radharani is directly there, directly in the center. She's in the center of every verse, but especially I also love these first four verses because it shows us, like you read, uh, I think two times Baba is, uh, uh, Prabhupada Nanda Saraswati Thakurji is saying that Muni is like Shiva and, and and Brahma. They cannot they cannot fathom this, you know, and they cannot understand this. And and we sit here. I am the biggest fool of all, and Shiva and Brahma cannot cannot be there. So, but I can, and we can hear about that. So just see how how magnanimous Mahaprabhu is. Now imagine Jagai and Madai, such murderers and such thieves are not there these times. They have been really bad people, but Mahaprabhu showed them love. It was Nityananda Prabhu who, who was, yeah, no, Mahap yeah, Nityananda Prabhu was the one who was so merciful to them and Mahaprabhu, he protected Mahaprabhu. So we are, we are in good hands and we should always remember that, that behind us is Gurudev and behind Gurudev is a long lineage of sadhus who only want our well-wishing. And we are, we should always, rem I, I always say every day, I am safe, I am protected, and uh, whatever happens is the best that can happen. We are under the umbrella of Swamini and we go on like that. And this is the only way to survive in this completely crazy world, to take shelter at the lotus feet of a true Gurudev who, who is completely connected to Swamini, who is the embodiment of love. So we are very fortunate. But it's not something to like, you know, who yourself to 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 rest and to think, yeah, it's nice. I'm very safe. So thank you. <laughs> no, it's it's every day. It's working. It's every day is a work and a challenge, and this makes us stronger and and makes us grow. Try it, other. Thank you very much. Thank you all for sharing. And I see Kanai, Kanai. Maybe you want to share also something. I didn't see you so long. Huh? I'm very happy to see you here and didn't hear so so much from you in the last times. I know you're very busy, but maybe you want to share some sweet words with us. Oh, Goravani, <laughs> so happy you remember me. <laughs> you know, I'm, I am listening. I'm in, enjoying the nectar from all of your realizations i'm the biggest rascal here so i don't want to 
<laughs> uh, yeah, take your time. I'm just very thankful that sometimes I get the inspiration to uh, come to the class and get the time and um, yeah, I can listen uh, to your sweet words and please uh, pray for me that one day I can also feel uh, these feelings you're sharing here. You can. You can, can I? Come on. I know you can. <laughs> I remember when I was first time in Vrindavan and I met him. He was uh, Puchari at that time. And not only Puchari, I, I don't know, he, he was completely like Mantra doing everything. I was so impressed. Such a young uh, person completely fully surrendered. And Gurudev was so happy. And I know you got the full mercy and actually by your mercy we are living actually. So thank you very much. And yeah. please be with us here and there and share something. <laughs> you know, Kanai is every morning he's attending Guru Dev's morning class. In, you know, so he he must have you know so much you know feeling and so much realization. So maybe next time you could share more, you know. You know, Maharaj, it's just my mind is so restless. I cannot sleep in the night, so <laughs> I am coming to the class. No, <laughs> not dedicated to, you know, so addicted to this in, in a class. I know, <laughs> I know, we know. <laughs> I believe that his mind is restless because he's completely tinged with the love for Radharani, so he must be restless, the mind. So thank you very much all for sharing. And uh, I, I wanted to just give a picture in the end. Uh, let's say you have a big store, you know, and this store is selling something very, very, very special the most special thing you ever could imagine. And before it was actually, it had, a, it had a good price, you know, you had to pay a lot for it. But now the store is opening and saying, now it's for free. Here's the rest of the store. Just take it if you like it. This is actually the scene we are in. It's the sellout of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's mercy, of Nitai's mercy, and actually the source of that mercy is Radharani, and our most dear hand to get it is our Gurudev. So let us take it to our heart and just go on, meet and share and try to love each other. Thank you.